Welcome to the Wheat Germ DNA Extraction Lab. The first thing you want to do for this lab is you want to take your isopropanol, which you may have in a tube or a little bottle, and you want to put it into your freezer for at least an hour, but preferably overnight. All right, so just tuck it in your freezer. You want it to be really, really cold. When you're ready to do the lab, you first need to rehydrate your wheat germ. This diagram shows what wheat germ is and where it comes from. Wheat germ is one of the parts of the kernel or seed of the wheat plant. There are two parts of the wheat kernel. There's the bran, which is the sort of casing, the exterior part. And then there's the germ, which is the inside part. And that's the part that can grow into a new plant. In this lab, we're using germ that's already been separated from the bran because the germ is the part that actually has the DNA in it. So here are all the things you're gonna need for this activity. So you should have a DNA extraction solution or soap solution. You should have water. You should have um, your balance and a weigh boat. You want a big tube, so a 50 mil conical tube. You should have some wheat germ. It may or may not be pre-weighed, in which case you wouldn't need your weigh boat and balance. And then you should have a wooden stir stick and your sharpie. The first thing you wanna do is you wanna label your big tube. So this is gonna be your initials your period, the date, and what's gonna be in here. So this is wheat germ DNA extraction. All right. And then you're gonna weigh out one gram of wheat germ. If you go a little over, you can take a little bit off until you get to the right amount. You then want to take the wheat germ and put it into your labeled tube. Try not to spill. And you're going to fill up to the 20 mil line on your tube with just your plain water. Okay, so make sure you pour carefully, do it at eye level, so you make sure you get right to that line. You're gonna cap it up. You're gonna mix. You wanna mix tw uh, 40 inversions. So each of these is an inversion. So one, two, three, count all the way up to 40 before you move on to the next step. When you're adding the warm water to the wheat germ, you're basically rehydrating it. And you're basically filling the cells full of water and preparing them to be burst open. So after your 40 inversions, you're going to take your wheat germ and water and you're going to add your soap solution. You're going to add the whole thing. Put it on in there. And now that it's got soap in it, you don't want to miss, mix it too vigorously because you don't want to form too many bubbles. Okay, but you do want to mix it gently for about a minute. Try to avoid bubbles as much as possible. This is actually a diagram of how soap molecules can interfere with coronavirus, but it's a similar idea, right? And this is also why you should always wash your hands with soap. Um, so the soap molecules actually break up the cell membranes by interfering with the phospholipid bilayer that makes up the membrane. Soap molecules are able to get in between the phospholipids and break apart the membrane. This allows the contents of the cell to be released into your solution, which includes the DNA. Right, so at this point, you have broken open the cells. That's what the soap is doing, right? It's breaking open the cell walls. So this mixture is a mixture of ribosomes, endoplasmic reticulum, DNA proteins, cell walls, all of that kind of stuff. So the only thing we really want from here is the DNA that we're currently studying, right? So we're going to use a different solution to help us separate the DNA from everything else. All right, so at this point, you want to go ahead and put on your eye protection. So either your own glasses, if you have them, or safety glasses, either way. And then you should have your tube with all your stuff in it. So your wheat germ, the water, the soap solution. You've inverted it many times. And then you want to go to the freezer and get out your isopropanol. It should be pre-measured, and it should be very cold. And you'll also want your wooden stir stick and a paper towel. You also will want some way to prop up a recording device. It may be easiest to do it on your computer, like I'm doing, 
Um, or you may want to get your phone and sort of prop it up somehow so you can record yourself as you're doing this final set of steps. Okay, so don't forget to start your phone recording or you're going to have to go back and find a way to redo all of this. Okay, you can start recording now. That's fine. Okay, you're going to take your isopropanol. And you're going to take your tube here. I would kind of tap it down. I didn't do a very good job of avoiding bubbles. Try to do better than I did. Right? But basically what you want to do is you want to create a layer of isopropanol on top of your soap solution. Okay, so open this up, take your very cold isopropanol, and here's how you're going to do it. Okay, you're going to tilt this uh, tube with the wheat germ and you're going to carefully trickle down the side of it your isopropanol. You're going to try not to spill, but you want to be very gentle. The goal is to avoid mixing. And what that does is that helps pull the DNA out of the junk solution at the bottom and into the isopropanol. Okay, you can kind of see there, see all that floating stuff in that top layer? That's your DNA. Okay, so you've got your bottom layer that's junk, your top layer that's isopropanol, and all the stuff that's sort of starting to float up in there, that's your DNA. When you add the isopropanol on top of your soapy wheat germ layer, you are precipitating the DNA. To precipitate something means to make it more solid. So instead of the DNA being all dissolved in the solution, it becomes that kind of stringy, gloopy stuff that you can see in the example. And that is what allows you to spool it out of the solution and separate it from all of the rest of the cellular debris that's in your soap solution. Okay, so this is the part you wanna make sure you record. Okay? You're gonna spool your DNA using your stern rod. Okay? The way you want to do that, you want to hold this up to your camera so that you can show your process of doing this. So you want to basically push the stern rod through both layers and then start to gently twirl. Okay, and you're kind of trying to pick up all the gloopy stuff. Okay. Twirl, twirl, twirl. It's like you're twirling spaghetti on a fork. Lift it up. That gloopy stuff, show that to your camera. That's DNA. You can blot it on your paper towel, right? But you should be able to see kind of white snot-like stuff. That's your DNA. Make sure you get a good clear image of this as you're spooling and showing the camera your DNA itself. All right? That's basically it. Once you've spooled and you're sure you got a good video, you're all set. That's all you need. Okay? So you can clean up once you're sure everything's all set, wash these tubes out, throw away the stirring rod, and you're all done.